Hi everybody, welcome back finally to Vernae and Ryan's MJJ5 Fanatics channel right here on YouTube. I know it's been a while since we uploaded new material, so thank you so much for your patience. Tonight we are honored and privileged to bring you celebrity photographer, Mr. George Livingston. My husband Ryan is going to be interviewing Mr. Livingston to talk about his career, his interaction with the Jacksons, his pictures of Michael, and his wife, his life, all that exciting stuff. Uh, Mr. Livingston is actually an R&B Hall of Famer in the Bay Area for his work in the field of photography. Over the years, he's taken pictures of, I mean, just about everybody, from Stevie Nicks to Huey Lewis in the News to Lionel Richie to James Brown, Wyclef Jean, Little Kim. I mean, I can go on and on. And of course, Michael. He's been at events such as the Grammys, American Music Awards, Black Film Awards, even the Soul Train Awards. I mean, if there was something going on in California, Mr. Livingston was probably there to cover it. So we are very excited tonight to have the opportunity just to get a little inside scoop about what it's like to be a celebrity photographer. Can you imagine being able to take pictures of anybody you want to? So sit back and enjoy this awesome interview hosted by my husband, Ryan. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm here with the great Mr. George Livingston, photogra photographer of the stars. So Mr. Livingston, please introduce yourself to the audience. Okay, my name is George Livingston. I've, um, I'm an entertainment photographer and an archivist. I've been involved in entertainment for 30 some odd, no, close to about 40 some odd years of photographing uh, sports icons as well as entertainment figures. I've uh, had an interest in entertainment for many years, and I've been very blessed within my um, my journey of entertainment. That's great. Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit how you got into photography. Okay, okay. basically it was, uh, it was uh, with uh, a lady when I graduated, she was a dear friend of our family. In 1971, she gave me a, a camera and I would take pictures of my then girlfriend at the time, my family members, friends and all. And um, eventually in, when I went to college, I was photograph um, those I was associated with. Then after school, um, I start working at the Oakland Coliseum and that's where I met my girlfriend who, who's now my wife. We've been together for 40 plus years of, wow. of bliss and, and joy. And she and, I, and she and I invested into a camera, but she exposed me to the entertainment of, a, of an area that I wasn't familiar with. And um, I just took it from there and I started uh, taking pictures, uh, working at the arena of different sports figures and entertainment icons and um that's where i am now wow wow that's magnificent that is truly wonderful okay now let's let's go back a bit and tell us about your first interaction with the jacksons my first interaction with them as far as um i think it was at the um Oh, I worked at a um, at a department store, and they came in to do an autograph session. And during that autograph session, it was just a lot of it was. I think they had their second album out, the ABC album, and um, I was working uh, in, in in a in the furniture department, and I, I was like a utility person. I would be moving furniture or uh, bagging groceries or whatever and the, it was a lot of Jackson fans there and it was told to me by my supervisor that the Jacksons are in in the building but we don't have any security so we need you and about six other guys to walk them to the autograph booth so we got together we were going toward the the warehouse and I saw Tito uh, with his head out the the door, then they all came out, and so we 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 uh, formed a, a group around them, and we walked them to the autograph area, 
and uh, that lasted about an hour or so. Then afterwards, uh, we were supposed to have taken them back to the warehouse. I had just started working at the store, so I was really familiar with a lot of the doors that led to where, and the fans were running and screaming. And so I opened this door, thinking it was the warehouse, but it was a storage uh, room. And Michael and Marlon and this other guy came in, but we couldn't get out because the fans were beating on the door. Wow. So what had happened, um, I said, well, this is a big good opportunity for I could get at least two out of the five autographs for my sister. Because my sister, she wasn't able to attend because she, I had to go somewhere with my parents. Sister, I think at the time she was only like 14. So afterwards, um, the guy who did come into the storage room with us, he was really cool and he went back through the crowd and to get them back into the warehouse. So we were able to get them back into the warehouse. So then I got the other autographs. I really regret that um, there was a photographer there that I would have taken a picture with them. And here I'm 17 years old. I had a little thing called hair at the time. And um, it would call it called call Afro at the time. Right. And it would have been really cool, you know, being, you know, like the Jackson Six, you know, on that picture. <laughs> but it just didn't happen. But I did get the autographs. But that was my first encounter, my, pers my first personal encounter with the Jackson Five. Wow, wow. That must have been something else. That must have been something special just to be able to be the security for the, one of the most dynamic groups in the, in the world. And uh, yeah. It just that, that's 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 truly being blessed at the right place at the right time. So yeah. I know that's your first interaction. You know, go back to it a little earlier when you had some uh, other interactions with uh, Michael and his brothers. Well, that's my first personal interaction, but but by my first encounter, knowing who they were, it was through Regina Jones and Regina and Ken Jones publication. If you want me to go back that far, that's when I first saw who they were. Uh, it was, it was a, a soul newspaper and the, the cover of the soul, it says OJ Simpson signs a big contract for, out of uh, USC. And then way at the bottom, it says Dinah Ross discovers new group. And I looked at the group and I really, you know, I thought they were cool. You know, I didn't think really much of it. And then later on, about a couple of weeks later, I saw that they're going to be on the Miss Black America uh, pageant along with Curtis Mayfield and Stevie Wonder. And they were on there, they were doing uh, the Isley Brothers this year thing. And I thought they were pretty cool. And then uh, after that, seeing them on, um, I missed them on the first, I saw, okay, I missed them on the, on the first, um, oh no, 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 okay. I saw them on the Hollywood Palace with Dinah Ross and Sammy Davis Jr. And that's where they started off the, sh uh, when they came onto the show, they were doing um, Sly Stone's uh, Simple Song. And then it went to the Delphonics, Can You Remember? And then Michael says, hey, this is our latest recording. You could buy it anywhere or something like that called I Want You Back. Wow. And I thought they were really, really incredible then. And then after that, I uh, saw them on, um, uh, American Bandstand, and it was a live recording where they were doing uh, James Brown, they were doing a trip to, to like James Brown's, there was a time, but instead of saying Augusta GA, they said Gary NIA or something like that. <laughs> so, and, and, it was, and that was pretty cool. And um, then seeing them after that, I think it was on the Ed Sullivan show and where they premiered, um, uh, the love you save, right? And uh, so that was my. If you, that's that's my early uh, interaction uh, as far as seeing who they were and developing a an interest of their talent. Wow, you was around the scene when they first took off, and and when they first became that dynamic group. That's that's really special, you know. That that's yeah. that's that's something else. That's the times I wish I could have been around, but I was just a little a toddler at the time. But yeah. uh, okay, so let's 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 talk a little bit about Michael's solo career. I know you uh, you have a little history with Michael as a solo artist. Can you tell us a little bit about that? 
Well, you mean when he was little, Michael, or when he's older, Michael? Because it was a, older, when he became older. Because I've seen a couple uh, wonderful photos of you and Michael together. Right. Okay. Yeah. That happened. Um, well, what had happened? It was down in Hollywood at uh, in Beverly Hills at the Beverly Hilton, and I was promoting an ice skater, very attractive young lady, and thanks to Charles Aikens, who was the head of um, promotion at the Oakland Coliseum. And he said that uh, there's going to be a Quincy Jones testimonial dinner. This was in the summer of 1982. And he says, uh, it would be good for us to go down there, dress, work the crowd, and we work within the crowd and to get some exposure. I said, okay, let's give it a try. So everything was working. The the security was pretty lax. It was all, I mean, there was uh, Ashford and Simpson, there was uh, Jane Fonda, there was Steven Spielberg, all these people just walking around. And I had my camera taking pictures with uh, my, my then girlfriend, who's my wife, and the ice skater, Robin Howard. And so we're just taking pictures and then they all go into the dinner. And so we're out in the lobby and I was talking to Lee Bailey of the then uh, radio scope. Uh, uh, and, we, and I was telling him how I wanted to promote this young lady. And my girlfriend being my, who was my wife, I keep on saying that she was sitting about maybe 50 yards away. And it was about maybe five people walking in, in the lobby. Here's, here's this limousine coming out with this shocking pink tuxedo was the man himself, Michael Jackson. Okay. He comes into the uh, lobby. Uh, he was walking pretty fast and I was kind of, you know, uh, excited. And I asked him if, if he would take a picture with my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, I'm in a big hurry, but I do one picture. So he embraced her and we took the picture. And then the dinner and after, uh, the dinner, the, the doors open. I just walked on in, and there he was again. And I gave Linda the camera to take a picture of me and him. So that's the picture that you see the two of us. Wow, wow, that's that, that's that's magnificent to, to be able to see the king himself not on one occasion but many. That's something. Yeah, that, yeah, that was during the time um, off the wall was happening. It was uh, I think about a couple months before Thriller. If wow. you look at the picture, you could tell that image. It was like that off the wall going into that thriller look. Wow, that, that, that's, that's, that's truly remarkable. Now, I know you have a relationship with uh, Michael's drummer, uh, Jonathan Muffet, whom he, Michael named Sugarfoot. Can right. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, Mr. Muffet and your relationship? Okay, what had happened with him was that I was at the... Um, I, I was able to get a, um, a backstage pass for their performance in San Francisco at the um, at, at the Cow Palace. So we're back there and um, the band was coming down the stairs going into, uh, to, to, to perform. And I noticed him because I only had seen him with a blink of the eye on 2020 when they did a, a feature on Michael on the Off the Wall. And I said, hey, you're the drummer. He said, man, how do you know that? I said, well, I saw you on 2020 and I recorded it. He said, you got a copy of it? I said, yeah. And so um, we, um, that's how we first met really briefly. And then about a month, a couple of weeks to a month later, they performed uh, about another 20 miles away, which is in Oakland at the Oakland Coliseum. And I, that day before I went to the airport when the Jacksons came off the plane and, and um, taking pictures. So after the next day, I, uh, and that's another story, but the next day I uh, went to the hotel where the band was, or maybe it might have been the day before, but what happened, I saw Jonathan again and Linda and I went to his room. We exchanged numbers and I told him on how I'll get him a copy of that tape. And um, we just became friends. And over the years, um, when the Victory Tour came into the Los Angeles area, he called and he said, hey, I got a couple of tickets to the last show of the Victory Tour. But before that, thanks to a good friend of mine, 
he provided uh, tickets for us to go to uh, for for me to go to the um, first victory show in Kansas City, right. and so and then Jonathan and I we talked, but we didn't see each other, but we talked. But right. then by the time for that last victory show, uh, he connected us with that, and then over the years, our friendship has been so good. Um, with him, with various other groups, you know, with him playing with Elton John, Madonna, and various others, he's always gave me access and to just to connect with him. Wow, wow, that's that's really remarkable. I mean, I'm just, I'm in awe of all the things and, and uh, the people you've met and the places you've been. And um, uh, Mr. Nelson, your wife, your wife Linda has lived a very, a lot of very, very interesting life, also. Very much so. She's like she's been. I mean. I'm a, I'm a fan, but she has been really instrumental in going to every show. That, see, like with me, I went to, they came in 70, 71, 72, and I went to 71, 72, and 73, I think. Anyway, I went to like three, I think. But she went to every time that the Jacksons were from all the way through. She never missed a Jackson show. Wow, wow. Now, uh, uh, I know she did some other things too. She's musically inclined. Linda. Your, your dog want to be a part of the interview? Yeah, 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 they are. Yeah. But anyway, she, she could, yeah, she could tell you about the things that she's been doing. But uh, if, Linda, Linda, can you come in? Yeah. Yeah, so, so go ahead, because I don't want to waste any time. No, no, no. You, 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 you. And uh, yeah. I'm enjoying every moment with you. And uh, it's just, it's, it's really good to first uh, see you through the internet yeah. and to conversate with you. Yeah, and here she all, is. All, all the places and the, the celebrity that you have photographed. Okay, and yeah. hey, how you doing? I was just uh, talking to your husband about your uh, uh, career. <laughs> and also that you are also in the industry and you have some uh, important information that I would like for you to share with the audience also. Okay. <laughs> what do you need to have? Hold on. My dogs are barking. And yeah, he wants to get part of you too. I told your husband. My he dogs are barking and, and they want to get picked up. Let me quiet them down for a sec. Come on. Hey, hush. So anyway, um, like Come I said, um, she could tell you about her involvement and um, her going to different shows and it's been um, quite a journey with her being in, involved in, I think she get ready to come on back so she could tell you about the things yeah, that yeah, she's- I know, she, she, I know Miss uh, Catherine Jackson's birthday just passed. So uh, yeah. I know that you shared a story with me about a time when you visit uh, Havenhurst. Can you just briefly, real quick before uh, Linda gets on, tell us about that? Okay, uh, what had happened, um, uh, Linda, when we first got together, she had told me about where the, sh where the uh, house was. So we go to the house and we we're standing outside with the multiple fans and one fan that was there, well, he was like a neighbor. And he said that Michael, um, he and I, he and Michael used to hang out and Michael basically wrote working day and night at his house. And so I saw there was a connection and the gate was open. So I said, can we just go and knock on the door and see if he's there? So at first he was hesitant, but I was pretty persuasive. So next thing you know, we go and knock on the door, took that long walk down the, the, the walkway. Mrs. Jackson came to the door and Instead of saying, get off my property, she said, hey, Michael's not home. Yeah. <laughs> so next thing you know, I mean, it's just like me going to your house, you know. Right. So, now, so now you know, you know what that house looks like, right? Yeah, I have been there. I have been there with me and my wife, yes. I bet you haven't been there when we were there. That house looked nothing like it does now. Wow. It looked like it was a single story house um, and it was yellow. Wow. I got pictures of it because I, I I took pictures of, of George uh, standing at the front door. Wow. Y'all have a lot of y'all have a lot of treasures. Y'all have a lot yeah. of good moments with uh, all the celebrities that y'all have been with. 
So you're quite a celebrity yourself, because I heard and I've seen footage of you playing with Mr. Carlos Santana. Can you yeah. elaborate on that just a little bit for the fans? And yeah, that, well, you know, I, I have history where I've been in his presence over the years. Um, when I first started out playing, it was right around the time Sheila E. started playing. It, she was Sheila Escovito then, playing with her dad and, you know, in the, the Latin music and stuff like that. So I, every opportunity I got, I was hanging around at, at her shows and, and their performances. So uh, I actually took pictures of her and Carlos Santana. Wow. Um, and then I got into a group. Uh, this first group I ever got into was a group called Lips and Fingers. And we were hailed as the next uh, Sly Stone in the Bay Area. Wow. We never went anywhere, but that, that was the, the hailing. And we were in a studio uh, called Wally Hyder. And Carlos Santana was also in the studio. And at a certain time, he was uh, playing. We were all down in the rec room. And he was playing pool and he kept knocking his cue balls off the table. So um, he came through. I work also for a concert venue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I kind of went to work there so I could watch musicians and be inspired by other musicians because I play percussion and congas and stuff. Wow. Um, so mm -hmm. he came up to Wheatland, California. It's by Sacramento. And I was a supervisor backstage. And um, I talked to him and, and reminded him that we were in the studio at the same time. And he kept knocking his cue ball off the table. He just laughed and said, that sounds like me. And then he told me about his wife playing drums. And I told him I was well aware of his wife playing drums. And, you know, I had just seen him the night before at, a, at another venue I work at, right? Yeah. And so... Uh, Anyway, to make a long story short, I ended up talking to his percussionist, Carl uh, Perazzo, and we talked in depth about playing and stuff. And um, when I was standing on the side of the stage in the backstage area, um, I was watching the uh, wife do her drum solo. Right. And because um, I also play drums, the regular trap drums too. And so, um, Carl came up and tapped me on the shoulder, then walked up to Carlos Santana, who was sitting, everybody left the stage. And he told him, he said, you know, she plays congas. And uh, she studied with Baba Tumi Lee. And, and he said, oh, well, let's bring her up. And I was like, wow, that doesn't happen. I was in shock. So I played three songs with him. And, um, and I put it up on YouTube so you can Everybody can go in and type in Linda Livingston and you can see the video footage and has his interaction with me on stage. And, and you know, it's just, it was really cool. So, yeah, yeah, I want all the viewers to go out and watch that video because uh, Ms. Linda Livingston, she kept up, she did her thing. And if you love Carlos Santana, you have to see it. You have to see it to believe it. So tell, awesome. tell us about your acting career very briefly. For our viewers, you know, because I want I want everyone to know how talented uh, a duo you you guys are. That uh, y'all like a one two punch. So tell us a little about your uh, acting career. Well, I've been acting uh, for a long time since back in the seventies, actually. Um, doing mostly background acting um, within the last maybe what five years. Five eight years. Um, I started getting upgraded to a couple of speaking parts. Uh, in uh, some uh, reenactments that, that aired on Discovery um, ID. So, um, and now, now I have a theatrical agent in LA and I've been going out on a couple of uh, auditions. Uh, what they do is self-tape now. So it's really cool. All you have to do is stand in your living room and, and tape the audition and then send it up, upload it to them. So it's really awesome. We're some wow, interesting wow. things to be seen. I, I really enjoy talking with you guys. I could talk with you guys forever, but you know, our time is limited on this yeah. uh, channel. But I would like to bring my wife on just for a second to, uh, right. because she's been having a rough time. I want all of you to know that my wife is really getting back to herself. She's, uh, you know, going through a tough time right now, but she's very resilient. Hi. Back. 
So <laughs> all right, the, the the number one Jackson fan. Yeah, right? that's right. Well, that is so <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, Listen, all I right. really love talking to you guys. <laughs> nice I wanted to you, bring man. this video to our, our viewers again, and uh, I will apologize for losing the footage the first time because uh, a, you know a situation that occurred with my wife. And I, yeah. as a husband, I just dropped everything. You know what they say? You got to merge to drop everything and run. That's exactly what I did. So yeah. we're going to make sure this get aired. And I thank you so much for coming on our channel. I really enjoyed your conversation. And I want to say thank you. And we will definitely have you back in the future. Hey, that thank you for good. your time. Really appreciate it. All right. Now, y'all have a great night. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you very soon. All right. All right. Thank you again. All right. You take care. All right. Now, I did a okay, so now we're going to um, hit stop right here.